Castology. This is Castology, and I'm one of your Castologists, Zane C. Weber, here with all of my fellow Castologists to my right. Liz Best. And across the desk from me. Nick Bleeker. We're oh, in a we shiny new studio. Yeah. Literally the first podcast I've recorded in this. <gasps> Oi, let's hey. go. Holy it's, shit. It's slightly jarring because there's not enough room for me to sit where I normally sit, which is head True. of the table, bitches, so that I can eyeball yes. both people. Mm-hmm. So now I'm sitting next to Zane and I can sort of still, it's it's the same configuration, but I'm at a, like slightly discombobulating angles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like a forest of microphones in front of in me In right between now. us. And like Liz is kind of like looking at me like. Yeah, <laughs> dodging <laughs> left and right. <laughs> you can't brace yourself at the table and. <laughs> I can still, you fucking wait, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I will brace myself if the mood arises. <laughs> I'm well. I'm a bit tired, but you know, life goes on. Life, life just is keeps fucking happening. exhausting at just the keeps moment. Happening. Shit keeps happening all the time, and it's really hard. And so we will apologise right now for the late. Uh, release of this episode. Literally, um, we tried to get it out did. on time, but not only did schedules mess up, and then I'm pretty sure there was some weather events, and then the, the building, the just building had, didn't have power. The building didn't have power. Some construction guy did something. The roof collapsed at one point. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's right, it you did know. too. Oh, and yeah. that's why I'm in the new space. And, and that's why we're in the damage. new space because, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And the new space is fucking dope. <laughs> so we cool. literally did fight hell and high water. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, did like <laughs> to get this podcast. To you late just to bring you these recommendations I'm, i hope they're worth it <laughs> i really hope they're worth it after we've hyped in that much well let's see i would like to hear from actually i'm going to start with my recommendation this week uh-huh. because it's a true crime recommendation uh-huh. this is huge. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so i'm recommending the doodler um now Sorry. yeah but okay yep. so I don't know. In, in the US, mm-hmm. does doodle mean the same thing that it does here? <laughs> yes. I imagine it does. Both ways. Because, like, <laughs> in Australia, like, I've got young nephews and we, like, their they're genitalia we call their doodle. Their doodle. The doodle. Yeah. yeah. And so when I hear the doodler, I know it's not about that. Well, it kind of is. But it kind of is. Okay. Okay. And, and honestly, I think that's part of the reason why... Okay, so the Doodler is about a serial killer that has basically been underreported, underinvestigated. Uh, basically, there was investigation that got cancelled. It was a, technically a cold case, but it's just kind of been reinvigorated um, because it was happening primarily in the gay community. Um, oh, of course, because that just completely. What? When was this? This is in the 1970s. Oh, okay. So, of course, no one gives two shits about the gay community in the 1970s. Yeah. So, San Francisco, um, and but again, like this was the time around the time of like the Zodiac Killer and the Unabomber and the Golden State Killer. Oh my God! So, like the the unholy <laughs> trinity of yeah. and the <laughs> worst the thing, killers like, ever. The, all the cool serial killer names. And then you've got the, <laughs> the Doodler. doodler. <laughs> Do you know um, what though? I've long thought that we need to stop giving them cool. Cool serial killer right. names and yeah. just be like there was a meme that was like we need to stop calling them cool names and call them like Bobby the dipshit murderer yeah. like oh that's great <laughs> Bobby the dipshit or just, murderer or just like small dick stabby man <laughs> <laughs> yes no more cool serial killer names you've got to make them feel terrible about it um, the yeah. doodler and so yeah this basically is a reinvestigation or or a a podcast about the reinvigorated investigation into this serial killer, uh, whose thing was he would go to gay clubs, cruise for for, for guys, and he would draw them um, on on a napkin and then go off and kill that's them. That's fucking what creepy. The yeah. Fuck. Uh, yeah. So that that's basically so, like leaving evidence of the drawings, being like, "Haha, here's like, who I killed." No, well, so it wasn't like taunting people. It was like, "Oh, I drew you." Um, and now I kill and you. Now and I kill now you. I'm going to take you home and you will die. Shit, someone needs to make a movie out of that. It's it's That's- not... And it's it's an interesting story. And um, so, again, I think th- th- one of the main points of the, the podcast is, like, it didn't get the investigation that it deserved because it was happening primarily in the gay community. Mm. And amongst the worst of the worst yeah. serial killers yeah. of all time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. It, it's um, the cover art is is quite terrifying. Just <laughs> yeah, I did wonder when I looked like at the cover. I was like, what the it's fuck? It's a little bit um, holy fuck. That's haunting. <laughs> um, 
I haven't listened to all of it yet. I'm just working my way through. Um, I'm trying my best not to binge any podcasts at the moment. Mm. Um, Why? Just because I find myself binging a lot of media. And yeah. so I'm just trying to... just Everything to in moderation, Nick. It's, it's more that Great I'm point. trying to experiment with what it is to not do it that way and just see whether I prefer it that way or not. I mm. think I need to do that with TV. I like, oh my god, I'm not going to watch a movie that goes for two and a half hours. But sure, <laughs> eight hours. hours of this one TV show, that's fine. Speaking of the Batman, did not need to be that long. Oh it my absolutely god, did not. I do agree with that. I will fight anyone. Oh my god. Yes. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's basically just I'm just because I binge things because it's easier to consume them that way, not mm. necessarily that it's better. I have to the impulse control that issues. That's why I binge. <laughs> Um, so, the, yeah, that's why I'm trying to do that. But, yeah, so The Doodler is a production of the San Francisco Chronicle, Ugly Duckling Films, and Neon Hum Media. So Ooh. I'm not sure what the films, maybe they're using the, the sound or what have you. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe they're looking at doing something. But they also, on just in their episode notes and whatever they have, like, do you have a tip? Contact this number. Um, and that sort of thing because I it is kind love of an ongoing that. investigation. I love that when it's, you know, like a live investigation mm. on a podcast, especially when they come up with like like with Teacher's Pet with the, was it Sydney Morning Herald, yeah. where they were yeah. coming up with things while the yeah. podcast was airing and it's so exciting to feel like you're a part of that. Yeah. If you, even though you did nothing but said, I said that in my head <laughs> on the couch while I was listening. Uh, yeah, <laughs> see, it's, it's even more of a vindication when you have to take your podcast down so that the jury isn't Yes. Smart. Yeah. That's oh, when that's you've right. made I it. About that. I thought about that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's uh, the doodler. Can I go next? Because mine's fake crime. You can go next. Yours is true crime and mine's fake yeah. crime. Um, so I am recommending a podcast called Motel Evil, written by Casey Wayland. Um, now, this is an Audible original. I do apologise for recommending two Audible originals back to back, but I kind of went on a bit of a... A, a binge because <laughs> impulse control issue. Um, <laughs> and this one appealed to me because it's very audio book um, kind of in vibe, but it, the the program format is listed as theatre for the mind. And I guess that's a yeah, nice way of fun. saying radio play. I enjoy that slightly more. Theatre for the mind, I think, is a gaming term, like a tabletop yeah. RPG gaming term. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah mm. but I like it. But anyway, what it's about is that there's this kind of um, motel in Alaska in a really remote part where the sun doesn't come up for like 65 days of the year. Like yeah, it where just the vampires is, live. It's just down forever. Um, and two murders occur in the same hotel room exactly 10 years apart. And so when the second one happens... All of the um, – and then on the next anniversary, so this would be the third one, someone else in the room suffers the same fate and everybody in the hotel is quarantined – not quarantined, what do you call it? Locked like down. Locked, locked down. down. Yeah, it was yeah. like sequestered. I don't know, <laughs> sort of. Um, they're basically – yeah, the police are like, don't go anywhere or else. Um, and they're all trying to survive the night plus find out who the killer is and cool. why. Um, so, yeah, it's the, the Rockyville Motel murderer. Is it real time and serious? So is there the are I'm some getting? flashbacks and forwards okay. at the start. But other than that, yes, it is serious and kind of unfolding in real time. So it's very and then there were none kind of right. style yeah, yeah, yeah. of, I mean, I'm not saying that everyone gets bumped off because they definitely don't. But it's one of those, I couldn't have done it. I was here. He couldn't have done it. He was there. Right. Like Almost um, Cluedo-esque. Yeah, very yeah. Cluedo-esque. Um, and I really enjoyed a lot of the performances in this particular one cool. as, as well. And it's uh, six parts. Um, and, yeah, I just really got into it when I was driving back from the Gold Coast late at night. It's one of those, like, late night <laughs> spooky drivey podcasts where I'm definitely not going to crash my car when I hear all these murders. <laughs> definitely not. So, yes, Motel Evil, Audible Original. You do need to sign up. So it's free. For two months. Um, so you can, you can sign up for a free account for two months to try it out. But basically once you sign up to Audible for your whatever per month, you also have access to all of their podcasts for free as yeah, well so you as getting your audio book. you buy it. No. You just, mm. you just have to be an audio an Audible member to, to mm. access it. Well, you can it. wait a couple of years yeah. and they'll probably yeah. release it's it. It's like Luminary but worth it. Yeah, <laughs> some of luminaries. Were luminaries, like, honestly, like uh, luminary had it. a lot of great content. Yeah, and then they but, paywalled it, and it, but that's the thing that it doesn't work yet. No, no, the, the, yeah, they haven't figured out how to yeah. make that work. Anyway, yes, Motel Evil, Casey Wayland, get on it. 
All right, well, let's go to Nick with a podcast that's close to my heart. Well, yes, it is, Zane. This one had <laughs> came from one of your uh, mini-sodes. It's called Artbreaker. And when I looked this up, I for me, this is where we talk about on one of the minis, how important podcast art is to capturing a listener. Mm-hmm. Reading a book by its cover, a podcast art by its podcast art. Um, this show is really not what I would ordinarily recommend. But essentially what it is, it really is a discussion of the the, a discussion of the intersectionality of creative arts and the climate crises, I think, is a nice way to put it. That's it a is, very verbose way to put um, it. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I've been learning words. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's. I found this a really fascinating show because it does. It doesn't feel like a. Doesn't feel like an activist sort of show. It doesn't come across as that. It very much is finding people in the local area, and I'm fairly sure like the majority of people that are on this show are from like the Melbourne or Greater Melbourne area uh, from like i haven't d- yes yeah. def- definitely victoria but there it is kind of australian new zealand i think yeah. there is some sydney and queensland and new zealand people as well yeah. yeah so it is locally produced which i really really liked but the artists that have come on the whole purpose of them show, showing up onto the show is to like how their art is informed by what's going on in the world in terms of like climate crisis mm. there's some really interesting discussions here i think in the second episode there's um uh, this lady Jen Ray she talks about how she has like this sort of exhibit where people come into a bunker and explore like food security and what like what is happening with food as the planet gets warmer and warmer um, and there's a really really interesting episode which does get a little bit nuts and boltsy um, from this dude called uh, Pusha or put up P-U-S P-U-S-C-H-A and he talks about like how he blends his idea of nature into um, modular synthesis which is a basically sound design mm. um, and I th- found that really quite fascinating because I've literally never heard anyone talk about modular synthesis on a podcast I've and never I, heard I was the like, words modular synthesis yeah, put together I'm, this is the most verbose I've ever been on the show you oh are sounding so smart um, today but for me it really quite resonated because it is like a creative arts and like this is I may not identify with a couple of things on this but it's interesting seeing how many people are starting to inform their work creatively with what's going on around the world and sort of the, the wider picture. Um, I will stress that the show doesn't really explain like its premise. It just, if you start, it just you is. just start. Yeah. And I did find that a little bit jarring because I was kind of like, it'd be cool to get an idea of what But then what again, that if you want to binge a podcast, hearing them explain what it is every single fucking time no, gets I really tiring. I don't mean that as a, like, you need to front every episode with an explanation. I feel like just having like a trailer or just as a, hey, this is Artbreaker, blah, blah, blah. But that's yeah. just oh, me right. because I so feel like... So they don't introduce the host. It's no. definitely um, what I would call underproduced. Right. Um, yes. it, it relies on its content. It is a content first thing. Mm. And yeah, so I, I definitely understand what you're saying. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because um, it's part of the... Climactic, climactic network. Yeah. Um, Have you recommended something collective. from the uh, Well, so I recommended Artbreaker. Um, and Mark right. Spencer, who created the Climactic Network, is a is a is a... Uh, is a close colleague of mine. I guess we couldn't call friends because we've never actually met in person. Yeah, but I'm sure that you recommended a podcast that we actually reviewed from that network. Did you not? Um, was it? Uh, I could have. Like, they do. They have a lot of science on like there. The- Red Red Line is produced by Mark Spencer, but right. is, I don't believe is part of the Climactic Network. Right. Ne- network. I just had a really big sense of deja vu when you said <laughs> that. I was like, oh, we've done this before. No, my yeah. brain's just Climactic broken, has a lot of great podcasts that you should go check out. Yeah, and Was I would it say- feeling the change? Maybe not. Mm, anyway, no, sorry, I'm just going on their so. like, website, but that's yeah. fine. But yeah, it's called Outbreaker. I found it incredibly interesting. If you're especially interested in the creative arts and the intersectionality of that and the climate crisis, this thing, bang on. The other, the other thing to note about Artbreaker is it doesn't have a consistent release no, schedule. It no, is not at all. When, when, they ha- when they have access to guests is when they will release episodes. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. As a creator, I respect that because, <laughs> God damn, it is hard to release regularly sometimes. <laughs> especially, especially, like, hurting creative people is... Yeah, difficult. look. <laughs> One of the even, worst things. Even non-creative people, booking guests for a podcast yeah. is, is my least favourite job. I love it when I get a good one, but when I'm scrambling, ah, oh, it's the worst. All right. Well, those are our three. So uh, let's move on to the uh, reviews of what we recommended last week. So last week we didn't have a a theme similar to this week. 
Uh, I would like to hear... Well, let's get it out of the way. Let, let's just deal with witnessed borderlands. Let's that. deal with that, shall we? <laughs> now, Nick, give yep. us a little rundown on um, both what the podcast is and what the circumstances were that came... <laughs> That, that br- you brought this podcast to us for. You. Okay, so the circumstances of me recommending Witness Borderlands, which I have listened to, um, now, now, uh, the circumstances of which this story unfolds is that I put it on the list so far down ages ago because I saw it and I liked the podcast art, and I was like, "Yep, sick." And then we got to recording how it was like a month ago now, and uh, I didn't listen to it. Um, so <laughs> and literally, he's like, "Oh shit!" While we were in the recording room, yeah. realizing that we had to do the episode of a podcast that he had not yet listened to. Yes, um, and then obviously, I will say, you're not the first person to do that. Old Patrick had all, already done that. Yeah, see, that's probably yeah, the most offensive thing you've ever I mean, said to me. That's <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I was just about to be more offensive. So I'm glad I'm no, go, kind. go. I was going to say, well, that's why we hired you to replace. <laughs> you needed to fill that particular niche in our podcast of the Slack one. <laughs> Love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Witness Borderlands is a true crime slash, I don't, I don't know if you call it true crime, like true crime mixed true drugs, whatever you want to true. Drugs are crime. I think it's crime, but it is more memoir-esque. Yeah, I would yeah. Say. true memoir. It's not like investigative journalism. No. No, it's, it's definitely. like a true crime like a, recap-ish. It's definitely like the story of the individual rather than like, here's what they did and yeah. here's the result of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but essentially what this is, is Rob D'Amico, who is the host of the show. So Witness, full disclosure, Witness is like the series and Borderlands is like the, mm. the story of that series. Witness colon Borderlands. Borderlands. Um, but it investigates um, the smuggler Robert Chambers and the sheriff Rick Thompson who exist out in this place called Presidio County. Um, I don't know how counties work in the United States. United States listeners... Please actually let us know. I would love to know. I don't understand sure what county means. They were very it's similar to like how we have local like Brisbane council. City Council. Like local council. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so, that like makes sense. so we have like Brisbane, Brisbane and Logan and Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean Presidio County sounds way better than Brisbane City Council, but that's <laughs> yeah. beside the point. Um but it, what this uh, what the show investigates is how these two basically are busted with this tank of drugs not even a tank, but this carriage of drugs. Mm. Um and how it affects the sort of small it's like the small Town or county of Presidio County. Shockwaves go through the small country town. Um, But how that also feeds into the wider question of the war on drugs back um, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even now, which seems to be pretty pointless. What did you think? How much did you listen to? Uh, I listened to like the first three episodes and then I skipped to the end. Did you. Now, uh, I'm interested in this if this was a me problem or if this is a podcast problem. Was the editing real bad and looped questions sometimes for you guys? Because there were a few episodes where they repeated things. And I, I was I like... Like repeated actual Like actual audio. repeated audio. So I couldn't figure Maybe. out if it was just the glitching or I, if they just repeated I thought it was a bits glitch, of audio. Because it happened to me. Yeah. I thought it was a glitch. I think okay. it's an editing thing. Then, yeah. In my head, I, I was like, oh, they're making the same point three times with three different people. Like you using... In, and a statement by one person to say the same thing as there a was from actually person. some times where the audio was a direct loop. That I might I might have just given them the benefit of the doubt. I, yeah, yeah okay. I, well, I, I'm glad yeah. that Full that happened I'll, for everyone because I thought it was a glitch and I wanted to bring it out, being like, I think my podcast. But if it happened to everyone, then I'd say that's really okay. lazy. Yeah, or for, e- for me, I thought it was just pocket cast being fucking shit. No, it and happened so, on Apple Podcasts. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, all right. Anyway, sorry. And I um, listened on Spotify. Yeah, so look, um, the storyline is interesting enough, I guess, <laughs> if there's nothing else to do. Um, but editing, when you're doing a podcast like this, effective, and by editing I don't just mean putting audio clips together, but mm. I mean self-editing and figuring what to cut out is as important as figuring out what to put that in. That was my biggest problem with it as well. Like overall, like this isn't a story that I would usually jump into mm. at all. I mean, all. hell, I don't mind hearing about a drug cartel or two, but this one... Yeah, I, I found that they were treading water a lot and just like, uh, to be fair, like my, it happened mostly in the first episode for me when they were talking about like the history of how he grew up and how there were drugs around and what have you. I'm like, okay, I don't need to hear from 
three different girlfriends about the fact that he was involved with drugs and a game. Yeah, like yeah. You, 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 you figure out who best makes your point and you yeah. put that forward. You don't, you know... Taking it's- 20 minutes to say something that could be done in a one minute. Yeah, yeah. I think it yeah. does suffer a little bit from... Netflix, uh, Netflixification in that you have those yeah. docu-series that would be great as a four-parter, but instead Netflix is like, do 10. Yeah. And you're like, why the fuck have I got four episodes of filler? Yeah. And I think the thing that kind of st- stuck with me with this in a positive sense is that there is quite a cast of characters that yeah. inhabit yeah. Presidio County. Super colourful yeah. in terms of the characters. But yeah, like, I guess when podcasts like this come out, I just wish someone had either storyboarded it or written like dot points on what Mm. the point you're making is. Cause as a, like as a writer, when I write something, I will go and reread it. And if I've made the same point twice with different evidence, you've got to figure out which evidence is stronger and pull one of them out. You have to like, yes, you've done all these interviews and you did a lot of hard work and well done you pat on the back. But if it's, if, if you're repeating yourself and then also combined with literally looping audio. Yeah. Yeah. it's too much. <laughs> it's interesting because, like, when I look back on it, I think I, re- I think I recommended another campsite media podcast. We've which recorded, we've recommended we've done a couple it before. of campsites. I think it was, um, oh shit, I can't remember, but it just didn't hit the mark. And I think that's it's interesting when I've start, I'm starting to see like a pattern with campsite in that they seem to have like a pretty like it looks good, but it is a bit flavorless. A lot of their concepts, I find were really good um campsite i think chameleon did, chameleon, did chameleon. Yeah. That's right, so season chameleon. one excellent That's right. season two eh. hard dip um yeah. apparently someone did write in um to the castology instagram uh inbox and tell me that season three is actually quite good of, chame- of, of chameleon. chameleon Oh, okay cool yeah so just fyi but while we're talking about them <laughs> it's cool. um that's the thing like i there's nothing i dislike about this podcast necessarily yeah. it just didn't grab me um and yeah the the that's the thing the editing both the audio quality was fine but the editing the audio editing and the scripting and, yeah the is, scripting was was yeah. less something to be desired I, I just legitimately thought it was pocket cast being shit yeah so no it, well, yeah, like I've, you said if it's happened across the board then yeah that's i i mean that's why i wanted to ask yeah um quality control yeah like it's bad. not it's not bad and like i fucking loved the first season of chameleon like honestly i binged the hell out of it um but and yeah that's the thing i'm sure i'm sure that there's not the, the exact same people working on every no. podcast and the i guess the netflixification of these kinds of podcasts it's rampant across the entire industry so like it's but i think this is an example of like you need to say what you need to say and no more yeah because I don't. I if I if I feel like I can skip ten minutes ahead and not miss anything, that's a problem. That's yeah. a problem. Yeah, because I I won't keep listening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, that's enough about that. What have we learned, <laughs> Nick? <laughs> Always listen to your podcast, yes. kids. <laughs> uh, let's talk to about my recommendation, which I am anticipating was not a huge uh, a huge success, but who knows? Uh, I recommended Time Suck. Uh, now, so Time Suck <laughs> is a super long form, <laughs> <Suck>. <laughs> super long form, interesting topic podcast. Uh, I called it a little broy. Um, it's hosted by Dan Cummins, and it's a solo. He's talking to himself, trying and kind of examining things as they go along. What did you think? Didn't hate it. Okay. Um, so the the. The things that I liked about it is that they were interesting and varied topics. I listened to an episode on Betty White that I loved. (laughs) Um, I didn't mind the length except when you're doing a particular topic, there were so many tangents that would go on for about 10 or 15 minutes of something that didn't actually have anything to do with the topic. I don't Mm. mind if you want to talk for two hours about a topic that I'm interested in, but if you're bait and switching me... Go fuck yourself. <laughs> However, the two episodes that I listened to, Betty White and something else, I don't remember, it was so long, um, <laughs> I like I quite enjoyed. Other than the tangents, I found yeah. it, it's, it's fun. It's like if you, it's one of those ones where you browse through and you go, I want to know about that thing. Go. That's kind of what got me into it because it wasn't, it's, 
it's not a Zane Dry podcast. No. It's, it's no. in fact no. the exact opposite in this in the sense that it will go on a tangent yeah. and not focus on the topic. Yeah. Yeah. So much. What but you like oh. sorry, just interrupting. But like, <laughs> you know, like i I loved what everything everywhere because that's the same yeah. kind of mm. but it's snacky. Super, super, short. super snack size. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like just rein a couple of your tangents in and this could be like a, a firm thumbs up. Honestly, for me. two and a half hours is an effort. Yeah. It is. Like, can you imagine sitting and doing two and a half hours of just talking about a, a topic? I like probably, I mean, probably could actually. Uh, how many hours do we record back to back episodes for? <laughs> <laughs> but not about one podcast. No, it's oh, true. Fair, yeah, fair we point. do go on tangents about other podcasts. We do too. a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was. Okay. I didn't hate it. That's a more positive response yeah. than I was expecting from you. It's like reminded me of like if Mark Maron did. <laughs> like, yeah. it's definitely in like, the, in, the, in that vein. I, again, I didn't hate it. I'm very surprised that it resonated with you, though, Zane. Because, like, how um, Mark Maron um, delivers this, whatever his fucking name is, can't T- remember. Dan Cummins. There we go, same one. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Um, They're the same picture. It's, like, super accessible, and I really like that. But sometimes I always, I felt like that he was, like, he's kind of like me in that you talk, sometimes you talk too fast for your brain. And so he, there was, like, some weird sort of flubs in that, it messed oh, with, it messed this with the, was the podcast. This was the podcast where he'd literally tell a fucking lie about something and then five minutes after he started talking about it, go, oh, no, that's I made that part up. Yeah. And I, I forgot about that. <laughs> like he'd literally be like, and then he's some gang... He's fact-checked yeah. by the producer as he's recording. Yeah, he's yeah. like, and then, <laughs> yeah. then some gangster came and knocked on Betty White's door and was like, give me all your money. And she was like, I'm not going to do that and punched him in the face except for that never happened and I just, anyway, let's continue. Like I was like... Because there was a couple of times I was like, oh, my God, that's so interesting. Oh, you lied. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, like, and, and I do... Like I, I like the delivery of it and it is... I was going to say, it is thoroughly like talked about I, th- I don't think you can say research because obviously there are those <laughs> moments that but in terms of accessibility I you know I, I don't mind it I think I'm I'm in the same sort of avenue as Liz in that if you cut out it's like Batman right you could cut yeah. out like you should cut out half an hour if not 45 I minutes I could of have that quite movie. easily slashed 45 minutes yeah. from that film yeah I walked out going like, like an hour less I, it's yeah. like why why is Batman fighting 4chan beside the point yeah. we'll move on um <laughs> for, again I don't I don't hate it I don't know if it's broy. I just think the presentation of it is is just a little bit like not not as zany. At least as the I episodes thought. that I listened to. Were yeah, too. Like, I mean, how can you be broy when you're talking about Betty White? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like when I say broy, it just felt it felt like it was almost on the. It felt like he was holding back from locker room talk. Oh, like he had the right. impulse to go there, but he didn't. Yeah. And so that's kind of the vibe I got. So I just want to prepare everyone. Yeah, look, um, I appreciate the heads up because surprise broiness is my least favourite kind of broiness. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but um, again, pleasantly surprised, No, bro- not as broy. If not, I wouldn't even say it's broy, no. really. I just think Dan Cummins or whatever his name is. is that Dan right? Cummins. Oh, yeah. yeah, got it right. He um, likes the sound of his own He does, he does, I think. And and that, that's where he starts flubbing. Like, And again, I'm fine with, like, with that, but in terms of how it's presented, it feels like it, it is presented in that he's showing off, like he's talking about yeah. some sometimes quite serious topics and he like flubs lines and like re, like like rewinds and all that sort of stuff. And I was just kind of like, oh, this is a little bit weird in that he's kind of excited about talking about the subject, but almost too excited talking about the subject. But it's also like, yeah, he's telling jokes that we can't tell that they're jokes because we can't see his facial expressions. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, he yeah. walks them back and I'm like, I'm and so confused. And <laughs> I, I think... He has his own language that if you're listening to it and you're a fan of it, you, you buy into and you, you get I it. I felt really yeah. tricked yeah. a couple of times. I was like, that is so interesting. Oh, it's not real. <laughs> um. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I I don't listen to this all the time, but it is, it's a good background noise podcast for me. Yeah, um, oh, I think it's perfect for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to the final one, which was Liz's recommendation, another Audible uh, exclusive. Not paid by Audible, but should be. Um, I don't know why I'm hesitant that you guys might not have liked this, but about 20 seconds ago I was like, oh, maybe they didn't like it. (laughs) Um, So this is Escape from Virtual Island. Um, It's a comedy adventure podcast um, starring Paul Rudd, written by John Lutz of Saturday Night Live. Um, and produced by Broadway Video, who also produced like 30 Rock and those kinds of shows. Um, and the storyline is it's the year 2038 and you kind of go to – you go on virtual holidays and one of the richest men 
One of the richest men who partakes in that service goes missing and they all have to go into the virtual world to save them. Zane's giving me a really bizarre look. Oh, God, what did you think? <laughs> Sorry, I just phased out as I was like, yep, this is all right. This is, this is what I remember about it. Um, I think... I don't like full cast audio dramas. I think like I think, ensemble cast or as in like every character has their own voice. Oh, sort of thing. so like non narration. Yeah. Oh, I, they're my favorite. Damn it. Well, I, I'm not sure. This is produced very well. Um, and they got everyone, that sweet audible money. And like. All the performances are great. Uh, but for me, it felt like an SNL sketch or a uh, more to more to the point. A uh, like a Thirty Rock special episode, which I um, was so into. I'm sorry, but and that's yes. the thing. I would watch this as a TV show You're easily. Right. Yes, but this it, it it was it was difficult for me to keep up with. Yeah, and oh, a lot of the point. gags didn't didn't hit because it was audio only. Um, and I think can so you this imagine is... some of the cool ass visuals that exactly. they would have in this TV mm, show yeah. though? Ah, this sounds this kind of uh, kind of like a big mouth. Yeah. Animation yeah. vibes. Yeah. Um, so there's like Jason Sudeikis and Paula Pell and and Jack McBrayer. I mean, most, and that's the thing. All the cast is you recognize comedians. their voices yeah. from Thirty Rock and from SNL. Yeah. Um, like this is if you're into this thing. Like if I had listened to this, I would 100 percent have recommended it to you. Yeah. Um, I just think this is a text that it, I would watch a TV show of this, but uh, the jokes didn't. Hit okay, as, as Amazon. Well as they could have. You're listening clearly because <laughs> you know Jeff Bezos, big fan of ours. Question mark. Send us money, please. Um, <laughs> make a TV show out of this, please. Yeah, Nick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said I, I said in my notes this is just a really shit backdoor episode for Thirty Rock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like. The cast is really strong. I can't stand Jack McBriar. He has no range whatsoever. No, he doesn't, but that's what I love about him. Um, which makes him <laughs> fucking annoying. I don't, don't mind him as Kenneth because he's Kenneth. Yeah. That's it. But he's also Kenneth in this. He is <laughs> he, Kenneth say, in he's this. He's literally just Kenneth in Isn't this. Isn't he literally like, I can't remember, he's like the fucking assistant in this yeah. as well? Yeah, like. Yeah. Um, He's Kenneth. <laughs> I, I feel like for me, like John Lutz, like leans way too heavily on just tropes that we've seen for eight years at Thirty Rock and in SNL, and I'm just like, this is See, just maybe a, it just hit this... my nostalgia bone because I was just like, oh my god, I'm back. I love them. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like again, don't get me wrong, the actual cast is is incredible and it is impeccably produced, but I was just like, this is honest. I I was like, I fucking hate this. The moment <laughs> the moment I heard Jack McBride, I was like. Right. You didn't uh, see him on the cover art. No, no, I know. He's literally in the <laughs> front. I know, I know. Right but I was, on the front. No, but to be honest, I had faith that he would present differently to me. Yeah. I'm going to try and brainstorm because I am positive that I have seen him in a role where he hasn't been Kenneth. So and I can't remember what, what it I is. Too. He was a villain in something and he was kind of like an effete southern villain. And it wasn't <sighs> It wasn't not Kenneth, but it was not Kenneth enough. Yeah, like it was... It Oh, okay. Kenneth. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't Ken. Look, if you're into Thirty Rock, you're into sketches and stuff. This honestly probably tickles that bone. This did not. Because uh, <laughs> I've not recently have got been back surprised in- if this was yeah. a, a, yeah. a spin out of a, yeah. of an SNL pitch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or if it was actually like honestly like. Uh, if it was basically just a cutaway gag for Alec Baldwin pitching a show to NBC. Like, that's honestly... See, uh, and I'm into that. Look, yeah, honestly, honestly I've, I didn't watch Saturday Night Live for a really long time and I've just gotten back into it yeah. again, so maybe that's why this got me yeah. in the right place. And that's the thing, like, the production <laughs> is great and mm. it has a very specific voice and if you're into that voice, you'll love it. Yeah. But I, I think it, it was just too... I think it was too high energy for me to accept it as an audio only. It was medium. very frenetic. Yeah. Yes. yes. And yeah. the gags, and to be honest, the gags are very, they're easy gags. They're not, they're not particularly smart. They're fucking pretty shitty jokes. They're, I'm not going to lie. They're writer's room gags. Yeah. Where you, you, yeah. They punch a, punch a, jo- a joke up 10 yeah. times. But yeah. if I want to listen to like sharp jokes, I'll watch Vapor, I'll watch 30 Rock. This honestly is a huge, huge thumbs down for me. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever recommended something that's been a huge thumbs down. I don't think me. I've actually disliked anything as much as I have <gasps> for a while. I'll have to go back. Look, Maybe I'll go I'm back, not but... super hurt because I... I did kind of feel like it might miss the mark for you, but I was just in the perfect fucking mood Fair. for it when I and listened look, to it. I think also if you look at if you look at this just 
without critiquing it, it is a, quite a nice palate cleanser in that it's not true crime, it's not like an audio drama. Again, it is yeah. just a comedy show. I like to compartmentalise my existential dread and this is one of those shows where I could listen to it and pretend that nothing was happening. Exactly yeah. right. Let's just go on a cruise through several different genres of comedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> waka waka, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, a mixed bag. A mixed bag this week. Yeah. Um, here's hoping that next week is a bit more positive. Zane, your podcast was the least disliked. Yeah. And I was anticipating oh, no, it I to thought be it would the be most. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really are in 2022. Yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, if you want to reach out uh, and let us know about your podcast, please do. Uh, you can find us at our home on the web that's not canon.com forward slash castology where there's a form that you can fill out or you can approach us on social media. Now, I just wanted to find, I should have brought this up. There is, we got a, uh, we got a, a, uh, a, a review that I, ah, I saved it. I saved it and everything. Next episode, I will be sharing a review <laughs> that oh. someone sent in. It was just really nice. It was really oh, nice. Yeah. I, was, I fully expected it to be like they were scathing. I'm like, no, oh, let's go. Okay. I, and I just wanted to share it because, you cool, know, uh, if, if someone's kind enough to write in, we will we will share the review. I 100%. Yes. Yes, yeah, I it's like actually very that. sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever uh, you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's us for this week. Keep listening to podcasts. I've been Zane C. Weber here with Elizabeth Best and Nick Bleeker. Okay. Nick um, was doing a weird face. Goggles He's on. doing like hand binoculars. Goggles. All right, we're going to keep listening to podcasts. You listen to some podcasts. Everyone's going to be listening to podcasts. It's very podcast heavy week. That's what we do. <laughs> There are known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. But there are also unknown knowns. The Ancient and Esoteric Order of the Jackalope is a secret society devoted to unearthing and sharing this forgotten knowledge. Each episode, we take one of these strange stories and share it with you. No topic is off limits, except for the obvious. Available wherever fine podcasts are sold.